that's me. My name is Dr. Rahul Shah. I come from a city called Thane, which is close <coughs> to Mumbai in India. That's my clinic. I am a maxillofacial surgeon, so I do uh, practically implant placements more than making prosthesis. My wife is a prosthodontist, so she does uh, the prosthesis for my cases. So I'll be more than happy to answer any questions related to prostho, but that's not from the expert's point of view. It's more from what I've seen her doing. I have a small operatory. Uh, Dr. Lutha asked me yesterday where do I practice. So uh, it's not a hospital setup, but I have a general anesthesia setup in my uh, operatory. I do all my patients under local anesthesia and if need be under IV sedation, but I have a backup GA just in case if I need to. So, but it's a daycare dental setup. I also have a small uh, academy where I do few trainings on navigation, uh, basic and advanced and plant body. So this is the city where I come from. It's called Thane. It's well known Mumbai in India. And I'm very excited to be here today in Rome, an amazing city we went around yesterday in a beautiful country of Italy and a superb center where we are here today. So moving on, it's been an honor, a privilege to be presenting with the names in navigation surgery from Italy, from Greece, from India. Thank you so much Luca for giving me this opportunity. Total Edentialism is a very difficult concept to treat. Why? Because you do not know what the patient wants from you. It's not just a set of teeth. In India we have different cuisines. We have uh, different tradition where people try to break an uh, Africa nut with their teeth. Some people try to pull up sugar cane with their teeth. So it's not the same patient would use teeth only to chew. So I promise him fixed teeth and the next day he'll want to go and break a nut or he'll want to pull a sugar cane. So it's very important not to just give stable occlusion but to understand what the patient wants and the point I'm speaking about here is because we have one of the questions on how do you decide if you would do a quad zygoma or two zygoma or a pterygoid or an all on four or an all on six. So it would again depend on multi factors not just the availability of one. This is what we don't want. We are here today so that we avoid this. We are here today so that we can place implants more precise in a more better fashion. This is, I mean, this is a reaction you have when you see cases which go wrong badly. Not that we don't have complications ourselves, but we hope not to have such complications. So when I was seeking for an opportunity to get from static guide to something more. I wanted something which will give me what I do in real time. In static guide, we do these surgeries with equally good precision, but finally it's a blind procedure. We do not know where we are drilling when we use static guides. That's where this magical When I saw this machine, I call this product Navident. It is like magic because you can actually see when you are operating. So I have had the experience of putting about 252 dental implants with dynamic navigation as against about 1500 implants with static. So uh, we, I have moved on from static to dynamic. 
and uh, in the last one year I have placed about 164 uh, zygomatic uh, implants with the use of uh, dynamic navigation and not just uh, implant placements I have used dynamic navigation for various <coughs> other procedures like trauma for resection for orthognathic that is facial asymmetry for sinus surgeries for removal of impacted teeth I have also used in arthrocentesis, in apicoectomies, and we are working something for full mouth tooth preparations to have parallel walls when we prepare teeth. So coming to today's agenda, what are we here today? We are here to discuss few of these questions or all of these questions one by one. Coming up to the first question, any light on total credentialist protocol? I would say every doctor here has uh, given their protocol in a most elaborate, beautiful manner. So, rather than giving pictorial representation, I will just go through the overview of what I do. I always plan a denture. My mean of planning a denture is either a fabricated denture or a digitally <coughs> plan it. Indirectly, I do a wax up. That is the most important thing because patients come to us for teeth, they do not come to us for implants. So, then I would do is place bone screws. I agree with Dr. Rukha that bone screw, in my opinion, are by far the best stable anatomical landmarks to do any case. But like Dr. Yugi also gave an amazing presentation with real uh, backed up evidence, I also agree with his fact that, that if we have good stable teeth, why do an interventional procedure of placing screws before taking a CBC? So for this, I have tried to sum it up in a small video. So if you compare bone screw placement against natural teeth for the same planning, three bone screws were enough to give you the green marks. But at the same three points, if we use on the dentition, you may not get complete green points. I have tried to take a scenario from quad zygoma to two zygomas to pterichoids to all on four and then all on six situation. So if I just take three points, they are yellow. The point is six. We want it between one or two. So what do we do? We take extra points and I totally agree with Dr. Yugi that it has to be minimum 5 to 6 points. As against, same 3 points, again for 2 zygoma and 2 anterior implants, but same, again 3 points may not be enough. You will have to increase the points. So what Dr. Luca said, he places 6 screws. I started placing 6 screws that was the company's recommendation but I realized that every case eventually I removed two to three screws so I started working on the best locations to place my screws that they can cover practically all my situations without having to remove them and like Dr. Luca said the anterior most point is the best because we never place any implants in that region and the buccal aspects just below the zygomatic buttress, that would be the 6th and the 7th region, is the best position to place these screws because even if you are placing a pterygoid, the screw will be anterior to it. If you are placing a zygoma, the screw will be posterior to it. If you are placing 6 implants, you generally do not place them in the 7 regions. 6th region is the where we decide. So, my protocol is to put 3 screws in anterior midline and two posterior ones in the six and seven which is just posterior to the buttress. If there are teeth present and if they are distributed in the triangular fashion anterior posteriorly then I do not put bone screws but if there are teeth present only partially and one part is edentulous then I would just put one bone screw but with time I have realized, if I am extracting teeth, I will put three bone screws irrespective of whatever be the case. Because that is the most secure way 
Good morning, if I have extracted the truth, I am not stressed. Check the accuracy at every point. Specifically for long implants like Zygova and distal implants like Terigoda. So those in the 6 and 7, it does not interfere with Zygova, uh, with uh, Terigoid? No, Terigoid is 7 and 8. Coming back to our question, uh, what are the techniques I apply to capture diagnostic? I mean, this is pretty basic, but uh, I use uh, extra oral photographs just to make sure of the different uh, aspects I need to decide about prosthetic planning. I take intraoral pictures that helps me uh, to decide the vertical height, width, things like that, basically for prosthetic planning. Uh, I always take a CBCT. Most of the times I take a diagnostic CBCT and an operative CBCT like Dr. Ruta rightly said. But if I can perceive that this patient is surely going to get treatment done, then I might skip the diagnostic and directly go for an uh, operative CBCT. So that would be a, a daily decision. Then I would always have an STL or an intraoral scan. So as to have STL data, I always incorporate the STL file along with the DICOM data so as to have a good prosthetic planning. This is why I do it because I tell the patient that you might want or expect the world in your mouth but reality is your bone is so much, your inter space is so much, your current hygiene is so much so this is what I can do for you. Beyond this is not humanly possible. So please do not expect something which you are not going to get. So that is one of the points which comes in patient uh, communication through Navident for me. Now coming to the next question again. Uh, my all on four protocol, I think it's been covered. So it's a short video on <coughs> how I do my all on four. Nothing great, it's a routine every day better explained by the previous people, it is just to show that I also do all of them. That's it, that's just, just to prove a point. Same thing, I would put three screws. These are the radio optic markers, like Dr. Lugi uh, said, onto the denture, place the denture in the patient's mouth and then continue with the case. So just to skip with the video, I always I mean, do a evaluation at the end just to make sure that what I'm doing is uh, what about the surgical instruments I use? These are the surgical instruments I have used. I have used an piezo. I have used an air rotor that is a high speed handpiece. I have used a contraangle that is a low speed handpiece. I have used a saw. Uh, for orthognathic, I have used a periosteal to check for uh, positions of certain structures in the sinus. I have also used a magnetic mallet and this is something which I have uh, done recently is I have tried to do arthrosynthesis with navigation. So to place into the uh, upper joint space and to place precisely into the lower joint space. Not required every time as navigation but yes you can use it to navigate your needle also. So if you want to give a specific block into a very different anatomical area you can use navigation to carry out that as well. Now just to finish uh, the protocol after bone screw I would uh, take a CPCT with the denture whenever possible so as to have a good prosthetic planning. Then I would do the scanning of the denture, that's why I asked you the question. I scan the denture both on the occlusal and on the uh, integral surface so that when I do the overlap, I know the gingival uh, level. But what you also do is something, I should do it and check if the data is as accurate as possible. Then I do the planning and then obviously navigation and then finally evaluation. So that's my take on uh, the protocol and the rest of this has been detailedly discussed. So I think we can move on to the next topic of. Yeah.